Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a long overdue look at the vintage Pelican paperbacks, specifically Pelicans A1 up to Pelican A100. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay, so we start off with Pelicans A1 and A2. It was a double volume um, and it was George Bernard Shaw's The Intelligent Woman's Guide to socialism, capitalism, Sovietism, and fascism. And it was in uh, in two volumes. There we are, volumes one and volume two. And uh, Bernard Shaw was a, a friend of Alan Lane's, and um, I guess he convinced him to add a few additional chapters and then launch the brand new Pelican List. And here we are. So um, it came a couple of years after the main Penguin series, 1937. And um, it was very much Alan Lane's vision to be like the popular educator and that's what the pelicans were there for they were definitely higher brow um, they were subjects which didn't fit in any of the other penguin series up to that point and um, I suppose they are quite interesting I mean they really are they're the initial ones that one isn't but number two here is um, like the the other penguin books of the time but they were issued in dust wrappers as you can see now personally with pelican books um, I've never gone out of my way to try and collect them. But over the years, I've had a couple of collections come my way um, and I've ended up um, with a collection of them. Um, and to be honest, if you collect penguin books, which obviously I do, um, ending up with pelican books is, is, you know, you're just gonna end up with some, whether you want them or not. Um, so that's really what's sort of happened with me. So I haven't got them all. I collect up to about number, well, up to a thousand, but I've got quite a comprehensive run up to number 600 which is my usual sort of cutoff period, you know, towards the tail end of the 1960s. And of that, I need maybe 40 or 50 for to have the complete runs. In this first 100 that I've pulled out today for us to look at, I think I'm only due about may, missing maybe three or four for the complete run, maybe even less than that. So this is A4, so I haven't got number A3, but A4 is digging out the past. This is the Romance of Archaeology. And these are the sorts of books that I think still hold up quite well today. Obviously, some of the techniques perhaps have changed in advance, but the actual books themselves are still really, uh, really fascinating. And uh, for that reason alone, um, they're worth sort of picking up. Plus, they are a very, very important part of Penguin history. And the brand was revived a few, just a few years ago. I'm not sure if it's still um, still being published, but um, they did bring it back with the blue sort of library. Um, this is a book which um, was first published in Penguin, and then became a pelican. So this is Penguin number um, 31 in the main series, which was published in March 1936, and then had a couple of reprints, and then it was published as this pelican number A5, because the actual subject matter was more in line with what with it being a pelican title, basically. Um, one of my particular favourites, that one in the uh, lilac colours of the main series. And we've got A7 here, Essays in Popular Science, Julian Huxley. And they list, you know, the first 10 on the back there. At this point, Penguin were up to number 90. So they list numbers 91 to 100 on the back there, plus the launch of, in that particular case, the Penguin Shakespeare. This is another good series that Pelican popped out, The uh, History of the English People. This is number A9. It goes right back to the uh, very earliest times. Um, you could read the entire series as a whole um, and get a really accurate history of the English people. And that goes for several of these. They come in um, multiple parts, as we'll see later on. So this one's A10. You see it's got uh, some like, silverfish damage or something like that on the top. Um, as I said, these are quite rough and ready. I've never ever really gone through looking to upgrade my copies. And some of the ones we'll see, particularly later on when we go to wartime ones, um, are going to start looking very, very tired indeed because they were printed on such thin paper. Um, you'll also notice that the tops of these are very dark. None of these have been through the cleaning up process, um, except a few of the more recent ones that I've picked up. So all of these at some point are going to need um, a proper clean. Um, 
another great one, the Great Victorians, Volume 1. This is a two-volume one as well. This is A11. And there was a time you'd get a dealer's catalogue and um, the Pelicans would be like, at the very end, it would be Pelican Firsts, £1, £1.50, £2 each. And that's sort of all I really want to pay for the ones that I haven't got. Um, I don't really want to pay big money and none of them are you know, that rare, shall we say. But um, some of them definitely are scarce, the wartime ones, you know. Um, A12 here, Inequality of Man. So similar to the, you know, the scarce wartime penguin main series and any books that were printed during the blitz um, it's exactly the same with pelicans and come the end of this hundred you will see um, some very very thin and fragile books a13 at the moment war hasn't quite kicked in so the books are still um, quite lavish with their dust wrappers um, and there's no sort of sign of paper rationing yet you know um, lots of these have got a photo insert yet they still kept the sixpence price point at least at the moment, social life in the insect world. This is quite a famous one, J. H. Fabra. Of course, some of these subjects would be explored in more detail as a king penguin, with sometimes colour illustrations. But these early ones are really nice, robust books. A. Fifteen, Growth of Civilization. I'm glad that quite a few of mine are in uh, dust wrappers even if they're not in the greatest of shape. Um, I was very lucky in that I got an incredible load. And if I can find the photos, um, I'll pop them in now. Um, I got an incredible collection from someone who was downsizing their Pelican collection. He collected all manner of um, sort of non-fiction publishers and his Pelican collection was fantastic. And he, he, I had it all of him. Here's the second one, History of the English People, book two. Um, yeah, and he was he basically just wanted them to go to a good home. So I did yeah, I did buy them off him, but I got them at a very reasonable price. And that collection forms the backbone of what we're looking at today. I had obviously, you know, a couple of hundred in my collection anyway that had just come my way, but these were uh, a real comprehensive run. Uh, A17 here, a book of English poetry. Chaucer to Rossetti. So I don't know if Penguin Poetry had actually started at this point. I'm guessing it probably hadn't because this would have been in the um, in the Penguin Poetry list, wouldn't it? A 18, After the Deluge, Leonard Wolfe. It's funny, I haven't looked at some of these in a long, long time. What's this inside? Brussels, it's like a train ticket from 1987. 4th of the 1287. Pop that back in there. I guess that was the last time that was looked at. Or maybe that's when my friend picked it up on his travels. A19, Medieval People. And there's certainly, I do have some favourites in the Pelicans. And some of the, the 50s and 60s ones have got fantastic designs. They're really, really good. And I look forward to us getting to those. This is A20, Vision and Design, uh, sort of art books, History of Art. A21, An Outline of the Universe, J.G. Crowther. This is another one in two volumes. Here's the second uh, volume here. So these have come as a pair. And it looks like they were bought as a pair because all the uh, sort of aging on them is the same. With numerous illustrations, it said. So it's A21 and A22. Religion and the rise of capitalism. Bit of a bent over dust wrapper there. And you'll find there's a few uh, religious books in the Pelicans. A24. Psychopathology of Everyday Life, Sigmund Freud. Little list on the back there, the first 30. There he is. Twenty-five. Only yesterday, 
an informal history of the 1920s in America in two volumes. So there's volume one, and there is volume two again. F. W. Allen. Hmm. I don't really know a lot about America post First World War. I know the sort of year is leading up to it fairly well. You are of the Chadleys. You are of the Chadleys. Seven years of excavation. This is another um, archaeological book, I believe. And I did a few of these. I'm not sure if my all-time favourite pelican is um, 1938. Is actually in this first batch of 100. It might be. It might be. A28, Civilization, Clive Bell. But it's, um, it's funny that they've always been regarded by penguin collectors as sort of a lesser series to collect, but I think they're equally as fascinating and definitely part of the penguin story. A29 here, Limitations of Science. As I said, I'm only missing maybe two or three from this first 100. Uh, pelicans, but they are a little bit patchy after this. Third volume of the History of the English People, now in 1815 for A30. My Apprenticeship 1 and My Apprenticeship 2, Beatrice Webb. So there are lots of these sort of doubles. This was a. This was um, published as an a Pelican original. This one. There was no previous published in history. If you have a look at there, look, it's you can see that sort of line down there. It's where this book was in a stack, and it was like that. There was another book like that leaning against it, and dust and dirt for years accumulated on there. And when it was taken out, <laughs> it left that sort of shadow. You see that quite a bit on books that haven't been touched in a long time. So I'm just going to pause there and pull the camera out a bit. A33, another one from Sigmund Freud. Totem and Taboo. Mm. Oh, look at this. Books by Freud. It's got a little insert inside. That's interesting. It looks like it's his hardbacks. Yeah, the Hogarth Press. So this is inside this book by Freud. So I wonder if that's a period bookmark. 1938, I suppose it must be. That's really good. I wonder if that was slipped in at a publishing level or not. I'd be interested to know if any of my other penguin collectors have got a copy of that one, A33, with a bookmark in. I'd be really curious to know. A34, Science in the Modern World. I say it's been a long, long time since I've read or even been through these pelicans, so I don't know quite what we're going to find. Now down the bottom there, you see that little reading case? So you, it was designed to go in a, a card reading case, and you cut that little bit out there, that square, and you'd stick it on the spine of your reading case. I have got a pelican one in my collection. I'll dig it out for the next video. A35, Great Victorians Part 2, various authors. There sure were some eminent Victorians. This is a great one. A36. You could almost say a classic. Virginia Woolf, the common reader. This is the first uh, Pelican edition of it. 1938. First published in 1925. It's probably quite a nice one to have. A37. Socialism in evolution. And prior to this video, I didn't actually look up online to see what some of these pelicans have been selling for. But I honestly, I don't think any of them are a fortune. I really, really don't. Um, A38, Art in England. You might find a few in the little sets, maybe three books for a tenner, that sort of thing. Um, and I think some of the art ones are, you know, sought after, depending on the artist. There's some 60s ones which are quite sought after, books on witchcraft. There's one by Arthur C. Clarke, which is really cool. Um, that sort of thing. And we'll see all of these later on as we work our way through the, uh, the series. 
A39 then, The Century's Poets. This is another one in two volumes, compiled by Dennis Killam Roberts. Bridges to the Present Day, Hood to Hardy. Anyway, that's another poetry title, which you would expect to be in Penguin Poetry once that does get started. A41, We Europeans. Backs change now to show what was being published that month in Penguins and Pelicans. Forty-two, A forty-two, the basis of modern science. Some of these aren't in wrappers, and sometimes if the wrapper was particularly beaten up, I would just take the book out of the wrapper and store those separately. So I've got a huge old bag full of uh, old dust wrappers. Um, G.B. Harrison, so introducing Shakespeare. So uh, G.B. Harrison was the editor of the original Penguin Shakespeare, which had just launched. There we are. That title's already published. So there was like a dozen there already in print. And I guess this was published as a um, as like a, an introduction to the series, I guess. Some interesting adverts there at the back. Radio Normandy. Look at that, Radio Normandy stars. I don't think I've ever seen that advert inside a Penguin book before. Interesting. There we are, can you? Right, it's got all the inserts in. Yeah, that's about as a complete a copy as you're ever going to get of that. A44, thinking to some purpose. Susan Stebbing. This one's got the, the remnants of a dust wrapper. <laughs> By this point, they, uh, they're just starting to see the first signs of a little bit of paper economy coming in. The Economics of Inheritance, Joshua, Josiah rather, Wedgwood. Josiah Wedgwood, what a name. And some of these are very much factual books, aren't they, on a particular subject. The Letters of Gertrude Bell. A46, edited by Lady Bell. Bit of a tatty old copy of that one. But I shan't be rushing out to get a replacement. <laughs> A47, Belief in God. As I said, Pe uh, Pelicans didn't shy away from religious subjects. A48, Lord Shaftesbury. J.L. and Barbara Hammond. Forty-nine, mutual aid. Mm. Nineteen thirty-nine, and number fifty. History of the English people, the epilogue. Imperialism. Right, I think that's probably a good point. Just to pause there. And uh, I'll thank my Patreon and channel member subscribers. A51 then, Essays of a Biologist, Julian Huxley. So not quite into the war yet, but it's coming up and any sort of copies that are in nice condition from this point on really, I'm delighted to have because they're generally not that well available. Uh, they do start to deteriorate in condition simply because of the rarity of wartime paper rationing. So this is the epilogue to the uh, history of the English people. And as I said, um, if you had the whole lot, they do make quite a collection, you know, I mean, a real something for your library. So this is a two-parter again. Philosophy and Living, Olaf Stapledon. A new book specifically written for this series. So once again, this is a Pelican original. And uh, Alan Ayn was very, very keen to get original works put into Pelican, like he did with the specials. And obviously eventually the Penguins. It wasn't, not everything was a reprint. So here is the much-anticipated second volume of the Letters of Gertrude Bell, 
Oh, I can't wait to get stuck into that one. Not. <laughs> 55. 56 here. Belief and action. This Count Samuel. Not oh, like Count Samuel. Still being published in wrappers at the moment, which is interesting, isn't it? Considering we are right on the edge. But they, they will follow the same suit as Penguin. Um, they will just go to flaps and then no wrappers at all. A57, great English short stories. Defoe to Dickens. Do love a short story. The 1890s. A58, Holbrook Jackson. That's a pretty specific look at 10 years in history. A59, the stars in their courses. So James Jeans. Ah, oh, looks like a book on astronomy. Patrick Moore would write a great pelican later on in the 60s. Slightly different cover design now, A60. Working class wives, their health and conditions. Marjorie Spring Rice. Yeah, slightly unusual cover that one. Looking at the inner city slums by the look of it. And where are we looking date-wise? Still 1939 for number 60. Another one here, 61. So I'm saying slightly different design of this. An introduction to modern architecture. It's pretty cool. Now, one thing I did um, find before I dug these out was my run of... Um, Penguin Science News and Penguin New Biology, which I have got complete. Um, so I might well pull those out and just do one video covering both series because both of them have a few highlights. So look out for that. Um, A63, inventions and their uses in science today. If only they knew the future, eh? <laughs> A64 here, Great English Short Stories, Volume 2. Trollope to O'Connor. No dust wrapper in this one. But I think it did get issued in one. That one, 64. 65, The Childhood of Animals. Sir Peter Chalmers Mitchell. Yeah, so this is turned into dust wrapper flaps. So there is a dust wrapper, but it's part of the main cover. So that was the first eco economical thing that they introduced. They got rid of the complete wrap around dust wrappers and introduced what's called dust wrapper flaps, which is those ones there. So that's at first important sort of little note that war is on the horizon. A66, town planning. Um, this is another one. So already the dust wrapper flaps aren't on this one at all. Um, possibly that had a wrapper. It might have come out prior to that one. 67 here, primitive art, and look how thin the books have instantly got. Things are already starting to tighten up. This is 160 pages. As you can see, the sort of page type has taken a hit. Although, you know, it's still got the photos in, which in itself is quite incredible. But you can see the page quality is much, much less than uh, previous volumes. And we are into 1940 now. So the war is very much full on. A68, You and Music, another Pelican original, a new book specifically written for this series. And what's this here in the back? Composers, look at this, a big fold out. Composers of European art music, wow we. So that's something to look out for if you ever come across a copy of number 68. Make sure it's got that big uh, folder insert at the back. A69 then, History of the English People, Epilogue, Book 3, 1895 to 1905. 
A70, The Expanding Universe. So Arthur Eddington, another slim little volume with a, this one has got a dust wrapper. So these weren't of course all published in exact numerical order. So that number 70 may have come out before the introduction of the dust wrappers. 71, The Psychology of Sex. Wartime advert on the back there for GIF. Short History of English Literature, B.I. for Evans. I think this is another classic, A72. This one with the strapper flaps. And slightly. Man, Microbe and Malady, Dr. John Drew. A73. A74, British Scientists of the 19th Century, Volume 1. An advert for the latest pelicans on the back there. Seventy-five watching birds. James Fisher. Um, we'll see lots more of these sorts of books later on. It's got the dust wrapper flaps on. I think some of their birds and and or natural history titles are amongst uh, their most sought after today. Seventy-six. An anthology of animal poetry. I did not know there was such a thing. More poetry. Oh. 77, Forever Freedom. Josiah Wedgwood again. The familiar sort of wartime adverts on the back. Seventy-eight. H. Monroe Fox, the personality of animals. Certainly increasing their sort of natural history output, aren't they? 80, plastics. It's sort of a, a plastic manufacturer on the back there, BX Plastics. So one very much specific to the, uh, the subject matter in question. Oh, here's another copy of this one. This is a reprint. Um, but I picked it up because you can see there's like a, a pasted over title on the front. And uh, I believe there must have been some sort of misprint. Yeah, this is the reprint from 1942. That was the first edition. And they dropped the picture. But there must have been some sort of mistake made on the front. And it just got covered up with that. You can see that, that like label there. Very, very interesting. It's an anomaly. It's something unusual, which would have just been for that little reprint, which probably only had a 25, 30,000 print run. Uh, this is interesting. I'd forgotten all about this. An A81, so New Writing in Europe by John Lehman. John Lehman was the editor of the, uh, the, the regular Penguin New Writing. Um, but this is a, a European specific one. It's all well there. A82, European Painting and Sculpture. And the books have got very, very thin all of a sudden, haven't they? A83, English Diaries. The covers are still fairly robust though. They're like card covers, which does keep the contents fairly secure. A84, The Scientific Attitude. Little advert for some 
specials, which have got um, a pelican sort of bent to them. Cine Biology, 85, A85. Another one written specifically for the Pelican series. Nineteen forty one now. A tough old time in English history. A eighty six, the Chinese, Winifred Galbraith. So this one also got published as a uh, Forces Book Club title. Nineteen forty two. British scientists of the 19th century. And I'd say all the pelicans from this period are now starting to get very scarce. A88, science and everyday life. Just because of um, the time that they were printed and the scarcity of the paper. A89, comparative religion. It's almost fallen to bits. Lies of the Great Composers, Volume 1. This is uh, number 90, A90. As you can see, my copy's very, very fragile. But at least it's there. Volume 2, which is number 91. Very, so thin. Super, super thin. And extremely scarce. 93. Very, not worth a lot of money. They're just, these are just rare books. It's as simple as that. And there's, you know, definitely, if you ever come across these, there'll always be someone looking for them, but they're just not worth a lot of money. Um, 93, because um, the people collecting them, perhaps there's not that many people looking for them. Uh, more of the century's poets. This is uh, Pope to Keats. 93. Ninety-four, much much lighter this one. Uh, English Justice by Solicitor. Ninety-five words and deeds. Thinnest one yet, I think. Ninety-six anthology of religious verse. Designed for the times. The times that they were living in, which was the Second World War. 97, an anthology of Canadian poetry. Another very, very thin volume, less than a, well, about 100 pages, that one. 98 is an anthology of war poetry. Julian Simmons. Different wars there, World War II, Spanish Civil War, French and Napoleonic Wars. They're quite interesting, I would think, that one. And the last one, number 100, that we've got to look at is this one, which is on explosives. Now, if you have a look at this, it just doesn't look like a normal pelican. And there was a small batch of books that were printed around this time, which are the wrong size. So if you look, it's considerably shorter than a regular pelican. Look at it. It's not the right width, but the actual height, massively shorter. And there's just a handful of books. I think the first I, Claudius, is also in this sort of weird format. It's just the way that they were printed at that time. Um, sometimes they give the printers inside. So Hunt Barnard and Co in London, so it doesn't say it was printed, but um, it's almost like the, the usual printer had the day off <laughs> and, um, and he somehow got his measurements wrong. But this particular one on explo explosives is uh, one that all copies that I know of at least come in that um, slightly shortened format. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that brief look through the first 100 Pelican books. Certainly, as I said, I've never shown them on the channel before, but I think they are still quite interesting and definitely part of the Penguin story. If you'd like to see the next 100 or so, um, particularly 
since they're all quite scarce wartime issues, um, do let me know in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to do another video soon. Thanks very much for watching today. Do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage penguin content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.